disc A with a mass of 2 kilograms and a radius of 30 centimeters rotates clockwise on a frictionless vertical axle at 50 revolutions per second. Disc B, also 2 kilograms but with a radius of 20 centimeters, rotates counterclockwise about the same axle but at a greater height than disc A at 50 revolutions per second. Disc B slides down the axle until it lands on top of disc A, after which they rotate together. After the collision, what is the magnitude of their common angular velocity in revolutions per second, and in which direction do discs the discs rotate after the collision? Wow, that was a whole lot of stuff. So let's talk about what's happening. So we have disc down here. We'll say this is disc A and then it's spinning on this axle and higher than disc A is disc B and that's also spinning. Okay, so if, uh, let's see, disc A has a mass of, what was mask, two kilograms and disc B also had a mass of two kilograms. All right, so disc B had a radius, let's see, do, 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 of 20 centimeters, so that is 0.2 meters, 0.2 meters. And disc A had a radius of 30 centimeters, which is 0 0.3 meters. All right, let's see here, um, disc A, and let's see, and, and disc B, so I'll just put it in the middle here, their initial omega was 50 revolutions per second. Per second. Okay, so then that's what's going on first. Then disc B slides down this axle and smacks on top of A and keeps spinning. So now we have A, and then on top of that we have disc, disc B, and they want to know what's the speed and which direction is it going. So let's first off just say right now that counterclockwise, we'll say, just we'll go along with the unit circle still, and we'll say that's positive, and we'll say clockwise, clockwise, I guess I better put a counterclockwise. All right, clockwise is negative with the unit circle. So that means now that we need to say that the, let's see, disc B, uh, disc A was rotating clockwise, so A will have now negative 50 revolutions per second and B was rotating counterclockwise, of course, which is positive. Okay, so now when we plug everything into the equation, whatever our answer is, positive or negative, will tell us if what direction it was going. So let's now write out our question, and obviously this is another conservation of momentum. So we have I alpha initial of A, plus I alpha initial of B, and that is all equal to I of A plus B times the omega final. And this omega final is what we're looking for. So when we isolate for that variable, we have I1A, plus I omega one B all over I of A plus B. Now I that we're gonna use, they're all disks, so that's all gonna be one half MR squared. And let's, let's see if we, Um, let's, let's see, what do they want the omega in the, at the end in revolutions per second? Okay, so let's go ahead and leave it. And then I'll spit out revolutions per second. 
Okay, so now we're going to have 1 half mr squared of a times omega 1 of a plus whoops, 1 half mr squared of b times omega 1 of b and that is all over 1 half mr squared of a plus the 1 half mr squared of b all equal to omega final so now when we plug it in we get 1 half times the mass of a which was let's see they're both 2 kilograms times the radius of A, which was 0.3. Let me just double check. Yeah, A is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 meters, meters squared times negative 50 revs per second. And then, oops, I'm gonna run out of room. One half 2 and 0.2 was its radius squared times 50 revs per second and that's positive sorry that looks really bad I ran out of room obviously okay so now we have 1 half m m was 2 2 kilograms times the radius was 0.3 meters squared plus the one half two kilograms of B times the radius of B which we said was 0.2 meters squared. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and plug that into our calculators. So let me do the top real quick. So 1 half times 2 times 0.3 squared times negative 50 revolutions per second. And that is plus 0.5 times 2 times 0.2 squared times 50 revolutions per second. So the top is all equal to negative 2.5. And then we're going to take the bottom of 0.5 times 2 times 0.3 squared plus 0.5 times 2 times 0.2 squared. And that's equal to 0.13. So when we take negative 2.5 and divide that by 0.13, that gives us a negative 19.23. I'll go one more, two, three, one revolutions per second. Okay, so the magnitude, when you put this in Mastering Chemistry, just put in the positive value. So we will say it was going 19.231 revolutions per second. And then for part B, they will ask us what direction it was going, and we said it was negative. So when we go back to the top, negative means clockwise. So the direction it was going was clockwise. And that's it.